What's up? Ghost Fictions is here, and we're back again. This is the part 4 of a story where Izuku became the Dark Slayer Virgil's successor. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Don't forget to check the description for more informations, and support the amazing author Armored Lord 1115 for writing this story. Now, let's get into part 4. Chapter 10. Heritage. After an hour, Izuku and Yu could be seen sitting on the bed properly. He had gotten somewhat comfortable around Yu's current adult form. Yu sat on his lap with her own breast pressed against his chest and arm wrapped around his own neck. It was obvious that Yu was enjoying herself far more than one might expect from her. Yu had learned that she can shift between her adult form and her 12 years old form. They had learned that her adult form was like her combat form, while her lowly form was her suppressed form. Given that she had been sucking on his blood for who knows how long, her adult form was accompanied by a very large mana pool, then in her lowly form. She didn't test this form yet, but just from her intuition, she could tell that her own spells will be far more destructive than normal. So how are you feeling? Asked Izuku as he made a motion at her current adult form. The question was if she intended to stay in this form or switch to her other form. I'm feeling great, but given that this form comes with a large mana pool, I will need to retrain myself in this form, but it will be better to return to my teenage form. You explained while well, Izuku nodded his head in understanding. In other words, her adult form had a lot of benefits in terms of combat, but it was also very destructive and based on you intuition, it will be hard to control her own magic, as compared to when she had her normal mana pool, since her spells will be supercharged. They didn't need to go back far, the fight with the Hydra was proof enough of how powerful this form was. She had almost one-shotted the Hydra so that speaks volume of her strength. So unless she can completely control her adult form, then it is best to avoid using it, unless the enemy is strong and needs to be crushed. This was Yu's honest assessment, and Izuku agreed with her. Besides, he didn't want many people to see her adult form, since it was only for his eyes, and it seems that Yu had noticed and gained a mischievous look, not that she will allow anyone else other than Izuku to touch her. That seems logical enough. Said Izuku with a smile which she returned with her own bewitching smile, as they held each other close like a married couple. Izuku. Who are you really? Asked Yu curiously while Izuku raised a single eyebrow in confusion at the very odd and out of nowhere question. What do you mean? Asked Izuku confused while Yu had decided to further elaborate on her question to not cause a misunderstanding. After thinking about it hard, your blood tasted far more different than anything I've ever tasted. And in a good way. Not only that, the reason why I managed to get this form was due to sucking on your blood. Explained Yu while Izuku pondered on her words. I honestly don't know. Although, if I'm being honest with you, I too don't know if I'm even human anymore. Originally, my hair and eyes were green, but ever since I came here, it was slowly turning to what you see right now. Explained Izuku which surprised you since it was the first time she heard about this. Did you notice anything odd about yourself other than appearance alone? I may be able to know something about it. Asked you, she too had wanted to know more about Izuku and the mystery that surrounds him. Hmm. I remember having a lot of dreams about two people. My status plate had also changed my name for some odd reason, and I'm now Izuku Sparta. I don't really know how this bar Izuku was going to continue, but Yu had interrupted him. Sparta shouted Yu in shock as she heard the name of the legendary Dark Knight Sparta, who betrayed the demons and sealed the underworld becoming a great hero to humanity. Many maidens like Yu had dreamt of having someone like the Dark Knight Sparta coming in to swoop them from off their ground and save them. She too had dreamt of having a Knight of Sparta to come and save her from her own imprisonment. Yeah. Do you know something Yu? Asked Izuku surprised a little about her reaction, but Yu seemed to then shift her attention to the Yamato, and she had recognized it. So this is the legendary Dark Slayer sword, Yamato. The sword that was said to have sealed the gates that leads to the underworld. I can't really believe it. I thought there was something very odd with that sword, but you had something that was spoken in legend and regarded as a myth. Shouted Yu in shock before it turned to excitement. Eh? Was the unintelligent response that came from Izuku's mouth. He looked at the katana that had made even Hajim shiver, and realized how overpowered it is. Suddenly, his confusion was interrupted when Yu started to kiss him in an aggressive manner, looking like she had already entered heat. The shock of having learned that the one who had saved her was actually a descendant of Sparta, had made her very horny. Why you? Shouted Izuku in surprise as he saw the look in her eyes as her eyes was replaced with heart, and he knew he was probably going to be raped by her. I've always dreamt of having a knight of Sparta save me, but I never would have imagined that it would come true. This must be my reward for being a good girl. Said Yu in a dreamy voice as she placed both her hands on her cheeks with a perverted look. Okay. Who the hell is Sparta? 
asked Izuku loudly confused as to who is this guy that would make you try to rape him, which surprised you a little, but she understood since Sparta was regarded as a myth and hardly anyone remembered him. Sparta-sama was actually the right-hand man for the Dark Emperor Mundus. He was the most powerful demon swordsman known as the legendary Dark Knight. Spoke you as she hornily rubbed herself against Izuku which had surprised the latter. The demon asked Izuku in surprise, and now he felt like he understood a little as to his unnatural growth and odd looks, which Yu decided to continue, even though she was getting impatient and want to fuck. At one point, Sparta-sama had woken up to justice and rebelled against his own kind for the sake of the human race. With his sword, he shut the portal to the demonic realm and sealed the evil entities off from the human world. But since he was a demon himself, his power was also trapped on the other side. Said Yu with deep respect for the man. Wow. That's really hard to believe. Said Izuku because it was indeed hard to believe. Demons were always viewed as evil so for his own ancestor to wake up to justice and rebel is unexpected development. Afterwards, he married a human woman and had two sons, Dante Sparta as well as Virgil Sparta. Both of them had gone on to surpass their own father and killed Mundus once and for all. Said Yu well Izuku was speechless at what he heard. So those two who had appeared in my dreams are possibly Dante and Virgil. Now I know at least what is happening to me. Said Izuku feeling happy to not be in the dark. Make love to me. Said Yu well Izuku was surprised but as he looked at her, he couldn't resist the urge to mate with her, and so he let himself go as he pinned her on the bed and kissed her. Izuku continued to kiss Yu, his hand was roaming all over her body before he reached her own breast and started to grope them, as well as fondle them in his hand, resulting in Yu letting out a seductive moan. He wrapped her arms tightly around his neck and her leg around his lower back as she pushed her tongue inside his mouth as they continued to clash against each other heatedly, but Izuku had dominated her much to her delight. Separating from the kiss, the two stared at each other breathlessly as today, the two of them were going to lose their own respective virginity to each other. Yu. I'm really confused about my feelings towards you. But I do know one thing and that I can't imagine a future without you in it. Will you please make me into the happiest man and become my wife? Asked Izuku looking her directly in her eyes to convey his true feelings. Ever since he had met her and both their eyes flashed pink and he couldn't get her off his head. She was literally living in his head rent free at this point, but it's not really a bad thing. Normally, a person with common sense will try to first date the girl he likes to see if the relationship could progress to the next stage or not, but this doesn't really apply to the two of them who had gone through life and death. They had been through a lot of hardship in the form of clearing the labyrinth. They stayed together and never abandoned each other, even when they faced a powerful opponent they couldn't defeat in the form of the scorpion, and later the hydra. Yu couldn't help but let out a small gasp of shock, she didn't expect such a proposal minutes before they had sex, but this is what made this moment very special. I, I'd love to. As long as you're happy with me being your wife. Said Yu, clearly shy with her cheeks getting rosy from the very sudden marriage proposal. It was funny in a way, someone like her who won't shy away from having sex was getting shy from a marriage proposal. Even her shy meter had its limit. Then from now on. You're Yu Midori Sparta. Declared Izuku as such, if she is to be his wife then she will have to take his last name or two last names, which made Yu even more surprised before she smiled. I really want his babies. Yu thought obsessively, she contemplated if she should trap him here and live here in Oscar's lair for eternity, but then trapping him here would be difficult. Izuku buried his own face in her neck and started to kiss her neck, making her moan as she felt him kiss, bite on her neck, which is oddly a very new experience for her. His kisses trailed down to reach in between her valley of breast and placed a few kisses there. Seeing her delicious pink areola, he couldn't help but give it a lick before he latched onto it with his mouth sucking on it which made Yu moan. Why you really love my boobs, I'm so happy so please enjoy it to your heart's content. Said Yu through her moan as she caressed his white hair as Izuku switched to her other breast and repeated the same action. Izuku could now understand why many people seemed to love breasts. They were soft and bouncy. It also had a unique taste. His kiss trailed down once more as he kissed her navel, making her feel very ticklish, before he slowly spread her leg to reveal her moist sacred part. Thank you for the Maya Izuku was going to dive in, but you had stopped him which made him confused as he looked at her embarrassed face, but there was also determination. Wait. I can't be the only one who gets to be pleasured like this. Said Yu, while she did enjoy this, she could see that Izuku was hard, and so she too wanted to help. What do you suggest? Asked Izuku, feeling relieved that he didn't overstep or do anything that would make her uncomfortable. Yu then pinned him on the bed before she sat on his face. Her face was facing directly at his member that would make any other man very jealous. It was the 69th position which Izuku recognized. What? He too is a teenager, so he often got curious and browsed the 18 plus section. Now. Thank you for the meal. 
said Yu herself with a seductive look as she wriggled her hips. Izuku and Yu both laid on the bed, the sky had already turned dark, showing that they've been going at it for hours or almost the entire day. Regardless, the two were quite satisfied with their lovemaking. We overdid it, didn't we? Izuku asked as he scratched the back of his head, having sex for hours or for an entire day was abnormal, since normal humans shouldn't last that long. And then, this is normal. Human mating is fundamentally different from races such as ours. You learn eventually that we tend to enjoy having sexual intercourse more than normal. Explained you in a softer tone while Izuku nodded in understanding. Yu then gained a seductive mix with a perverted look as she curled over his chest and placed a kiss on his lips which he quickly returned. Her large breast was pressed against his chest and he felt he may get hard again. For that reason. If you ever feel like you want to bend me over and ravage my body to your heart's content, then do not hesitate. Remember, my body is yours. Said you while Izuku blushed. I, I understand. Said Izuku with a blush on his face, you saying something like that was pushing his buttons, while you herself smiled happily at hearing his response. I never thought I'd zing in a place like this. Now I'm no longer really upset anymore about being betrayed by my uncle. Said you with a content smile while Izuku looked at her curiously. Zing. What's that? Asked Izuku while you turned to look at him with a very beautiful smile on her face. She didn't blame him for not knowing since it was really uncommon for it to happen. Zing is what humans would call as love at first sight, which only happens when a person meets his or her soulmate with whom they will spend eternity with. Explained you, which surprised Izuku upon hearing that. Didn't you feel as if your eye flashed pink all of a sudden? This is a Zing. So even if you were to take another lover, you may love them, but not to the same extent as with the person who you zinged with. Explained you while Izuku remembered. I see. So that time was when I zinged with you. Well I guess that's fine said Izuku with a smile partly relieved that he wasn't quick to fall in love with some pretty women. It will be an issue if that was the case, because if there is anything he had learned from his years of experience in being an Eldera is that women can sometimes be cruel even more than boys. Well guys would just verbally abuse you or try to harm you physically, but those are just typical and expected of them, besides he had dealt with Katsuki from kindergarten up to one or two years in Eldera, before he moved to a new middle school. He was sure that no one could ever top what Katsuki had done to him back in Eldera. Katsuki had used his quirk explosion to leave him with severe burns and even wounds by the end of the day. So his new middle school was far better since they had stricter quirk rules, so he only ever received taunts or getting pushed. As for girls, he had met those who led him on to believe that they like him, only to brutally reveal to him that they never liked him and were just toying with him, which often left him crushed and with low self-confidence, which is why he had issues with girls in general. Those girls had no life, they simply had too much time in their hands to bully others and lead them on. Which is why he never really pursued any relationship with girls because of his trauma, although he did overcome it, but that's beside the point. Still, he is glad that his and Yu's relationship has a meaning. This was a quite genuine relationship between two people who love each other, so Yu is more than enough for him to live happily. I can't wait to introduce her to mom. Thought Izuku in his head, he could imagine his mom fainting after she learns that her son had married a literal queen. Chapter 11. Creation Magic. He really slept like a baby. Said Izuku as he hovered over Hajim who was sleeping with a bed sheet covering up to his nose, looking like Akashi from Naruto when he was healed by Tsunade. Hajim narrowed his left eye to his best friend, clearly unbothered by the fact that his right eye was already gone, as it was bandaged by a freshly new white bandage, as Izuku had decided to treat him when he was sleeping at one point, while also cleaning his upper body with a wet cloth, just to disinfect any wound. Although, Izuku was doubtful that the concept of infection was going to be an issue, given that Hajim was now a hybrid monster, so he had acquired quite a lot of resistance, and he was a demon or maybe even a hybrid one, but better be safe than sorry. Excuse me for wanting to sleep after fighting that fucking Hydra. By the way, you're welcome. Said Hajim, it was obvious that he was making a jab at the fact that he went solo on the Hydra for a few minutes after he got knocked out for a while. Now, don't be grumpy like that. It doesn't suit you then again you've always been into edgelord characters so I wouldn't be surprised if you became one. Said Izuku mockingly while Hajim got Bane's throbbing in his head. This was just their normal banter between best friends. They knew there was nothing harmful, they were just messing with each other with words alone. Not to mention, banters like this is what makes them stay human. I'm not an edgelord. Shouted Hajim as he sat properly and noticed that he was half naked. He still had worn his pants from before, but his top clothes were removed, and instead he could see his bandaged chest. Also. Why am I half naked? Asked Hajim while Izuku couldn't help but give him a deadpan look at the stupid question. Why would a person remove his clothes unless of course for medical purposes? 
I stripped you myself the previous day in order to bandage you unless you really like to sleep in your own sweat and monster blood. Said Izuku in a nonchalant manner while Hajim nodded his head in acceptance. Maybe it's because he was half naked that he had slept better. The shirt and jacket were already quite stuffy to begin with, so he didn't care much that he was stripped during his sleep, although he was glad that his pants weren't also removed. Let's leave that aside, for now I've brought you some clothes other than the ones you currently wear. Also, me and you happen to have run into a bath on the ground floor. Said Izuku as he tossed Hajim many clothes that he could choose from. Izuku currently wore a dark blue button shirt accompanied by a white pants with a black belt. He also wore brown boots to complete his looks. A certain demon king of tyranny would definitely be proud of Izuku for the good taste. A bath. How long has it been since I've taken one? Yosh. I will head down there. Said Hajim energetically as he picked a few clothes from the pile that Izuku had brought to him. It was just a simple brown shirt and dark brown pants with a belt. He planned to put Donner on the back looking like one of those Yakuza who'd pulled just a gun from inside their pants to shoot. Hajim then turned to gaze at Izuku with an expectant gaze, knowing that Izuku had something to say. He could already guess that Izuku had done more than just enjoy a hot bath, but rather he probably looked around. Me and you have looked around Oscar Mansion and found there are three floors to this house. The library and the workshop were the only ones that we couldn't access unless we had the keys to it. Explained Izuku while Hajim nodded his head. That aside, we found some sort of a throne room on the third floor, with the corpse of the Maverick himself, as well as a magic circle in front of it. Me and you haven't done anything yet, since we decided to wait until you woke up. Said Izuku while Hajim nodded. Well. Let's postpone the bathing, I want to see what's this all about, maybe this could tell us the exit as well. Said Hajim, the whole point of going down there was to find an exit in the first place. I figured you'd say that. Let's go. Said Izuku as he walked outside while Hajim clicked his tongue repeatedly as he discarded his pants and wore the new clothes. He walked out of the room to be met by you as well, but this time the former vampire queen was in her lowly form, as he and Izuku had dubbed it, since it was technically her form when she was 12 years old before she stopped aging. Hmm. Didn't you just earlier transform into an adult woman? Asked Hajim in confusion since Hajim had clearly remembered how you transformed and overpowered the Hydra with a single attack. And then, I do have it, but I much prefer this one given how easier it is to control my magic. Said you simply while Hajim reluctantly nodded his head in acceptance to the answer. Think of her adult form as a battle form. Said Izuku speaking the language of every attacku which Hajim immediately understood the meaning behind, as he looked at you momentarily before nodding his head. It was like that isekai novel he had recently picked up, which is that time I got reincarnated as a slime, where the white ice dragon Velzard has her own concealed form which takes the form of a young girl, while also having her true form or battle form, that give her the appearance of a mature woman. I see. That seems logical enough. Said Hajim while Yu was somewhat surprised seeing that Hajim understood from Izuku's small sentence, but then again, Hajim always striked her as a smart person. Now then, it's best if we head to that throne room. Said Izuku while the two nodded as they didn't waste any time, and started to head towards the room that both Izuku and Yu had found. Hajim, who was unfamiliar with the lair, walked slowly before he stopped to look at a window which showed sunlight. Opening the window, he couldn't help but smile as he saw the ray of suns peeking through. The sun? No, it couldn't be. Muttered Hajim to himself as they were still deep inside the labyrinth most importantly in the home of Oscar Orcus, one of the mavericks who rebelled against the gods. It's an artificial sky from what we can tell. During nighttime, you will see the sky become dark. I have to admit, that Oscar guy is a master of his craft if he was able to create something like this. Said Izuku giving praise where it's due. Hajim felt his muscles somewhat relax seeing the sun, even if it was artificial as Izuku had said, but being met with light was better than the dark and creepy place that was the lower floor of the labyrinth. After that, the group continued forward with them keeping a moderate pace out of consideration to Hajim who was unfamiliar with the place, and as such needed time to look around. They ran into the bath along the way which Hajim couldn't help but check the water temperature with his hand, and surprisingly despite how long this place was left without any visitors, the water temperature was at an appropriate one where one can enjoy themselves. I will have to take a long one at night. Said Hajim as he pulled his hand from the water and turned towards the two who patiently waited for him as they moved once more towards the staircase. As they climbed the third floor of the mansion, several crystals on the wall started to emit a glow that allowed them to see around, as it helped guide them towards a small room, which had the appearance of a throne room. Almost like he was waiting for someone. Said Hajim whose eyes fell on the skeleton corpse of the Maverick who looked like he was expecting someone to come here. This is definitely a fantasy world. Said Izuku while Hajim couldn't help but nod in his head in agreement. This was a scene they've seen quite a few times in manga and other novels. 
At the center of the room, there was a circular magic circle which they're supposed to walk into. Hajim looked hesitant since they still didn't know what would happen if they walked inside the magic circle. This room's gotta be the key to finding a route to the surface. You two, help me out if this goes south. Said Hajim as he turned towards the two while they nodded their heads. M.M. Be careful. Said Yu nodding her head, Hajim was still an important friend who had helped save her, even though he was reluctant and against her being released at the start. Sure, in case you die. What would be your last will? Asked Izuku in a very cheerful voice as he pulled a pen and a notebook, while Hajim got veins popping in his head. Go ahead. Do you want me to delete the gentleman folder for you or better yet the, the darkness of my soul folder? Asked Izuku, making Hajim face contort to shock. How in the hell do you know about those? Shouted Hajim, those folders contain his dark secrets that he hid and even put a passcode on, so that no one would be able to access it. Those folders happen to have 18 plus pictures and even files that Hajim would rather shoot himself to death than to have someone find it. Those folders contain his dark secrets and his dark legacy. Details details. I've only hack I mean those folders were just open and I saw them. Now then, if you were to die, I'd like to have those limited edition manga since I don't have any of those, and also I want. Said Izuku in a shameless manner, but he was interrupted with two loud bangs. Open. Dopen. Hajim didn't hesitate to fire two bullets at Izuku, with the two bullets hitting both his chest, while Izuku in exaggerated manner, jerked his body, like how those action movies do when someone is shot. Izuku. Shouted Yu in shock as she saw Izuku being shot and glared at Hajim for what he had done, even if Izuku is technically like her, but still it took her off guard, and it was unexpected, while Hajim looked coldly. Take those to your grave. I will make sure to remember you forever my dear best friend who ran his tongue too much. Said Hajim with tears of blood in his eyes although he knew this wasn't going to kill him. Sorry to run in your parade, but I'm not dead. Said Izuku with a cackle as he sat properly pulling the two bullets from his own chest, and he started to heal instantly. Even if Hajim were to actually shoot him in the head, he will still live. Don't you ever dare mention those ever again, you will take them to your grave, you hear me shouted Hajim threateningly as he pointed the muzzle of the gun at Izuku, who waved both his hands like some criminal who got told to raise his hand, but it was a mocking one. Yes, yes. Why are you so upset? I'm giving you the opportunity to write your own final will. Don't you want to take the entire computer down with you to the grave? Asked Izuku with a raised eyebrow while Hajim blushed. Don't speak such nonsense. I won't die. Shouted Hajim as he huffed and walked towards the magic circle which started to glow red while Yu checked on Izuku, seeing that he was okay and unharmed. Izuku wasn't really offended in the least by Hajim shooting him. The two had already lost their common sense down in the labyrinth, so shooting each other was the equivalent of a playful wrestling or a playful punch on the shoulder. Hajim froze as he grabbed his head as if he was being poked all over by a lot of needles. His memory was currently being reviewed by the magic circle. Then, a ghost-like figure had stood up from the throne room revealing Oscar Orcus, but this was a holographic, a recording that he made before his death. Hajim instinctively reached for Donner on his back ready to defend, and so did Izuku who was holding onto the Yamato. My name is Oscar Orcus. I am the man who built this labyrinth. You've done well to survive my trials and make it here. Oscar introduced himself to the group, while Izuku grip slightly eased on the Yamato. The term Maverick should be familiar to you, yes? Asked Oscar, but it was a holographic so he had no way of knowing who was before him, since this was only a recording. So you're him. Muttered Hajim mostly to himself as he remembered what you had said about the Mavericks, who had rebelled against the gods and built the labyrinths that were scattered across the planet. Sorry, but you'll have to hold off on questions. This is just a recording, after all. Unfortunately, I can't answer your questions. Oscar said as if anticipating that the Labyrinth Conqueror would have questions. I just wanted to leave a message for the person who made it here, to share the reasons why someone who knew the truth of this world chose to fight against it. Said Oscar with a gentle tone. I don't know who you are or why you came here. But there's something I want you to know. I will give you my power. Use it as you please. Just please don't use it for evil. Said Oscar who now stood facing Hajim. Power? Asked Hajim not expecting that he will get some power from all of this, but maybe it will be beneficial if he gains something to help him to return back home. That's all. Thank you for listening. I hope you will be able to live by your own free will. Said Oscar before he vanished while Hajim suddenly felt another pulse in his head and grabbed onto his head. WH what's happening? It's like something is being imprinted onto my mind. Said Hajim as he let out a few groans of pain, or rather it looked like he was trying to poop before the magic circle stopped glowing. Holy shit. Said Hajim who finally realized that those mavericks weren't some evil people, but rather they were liberators who tried to free this world from the tyranny of the gods. What did you see, Hajim? 
asked Izuku as he narrowed his eyes, realizing that Hajim must have seen something. They weren't evil gods or mavericks, they were liberators. Explained Hajim as he turned towards Izuku and Yu, while the latter looked confused. What now? Asked Yu, she didn't know much of the details, but she knew that this changed everything. Will they fight against Ahid and Alva or not? We told you before, we don't give a crap about what happens to this world. We're going home. That's it. Said Hajim in a firm tone while Izuku nodded his head in agreement. Although Izuku had some doubts. Going home won't be easy as it sounds, there are also a lot of things that they need to take into account. If the gods are evil then there will definitely be agents that will simply try to stop them from returning. It wouldn't be a surprise if Ehit himself were to come down to pick a fight with them. But those were just mere speculation, and he doesn't know if it will actually come into fruition, but it's better to be prepared for the worst case scenario. Be worried about it. Asked Hajim while Yu shook her own head as she grabbed Izuku's hand who looked at her, but he nonetheless held her hand tightly in his own hand. I belong here. I don't care about anything else. Yu expressed her true feelings that as long as Izuku wishes it, then she will be more than happy to follow him around. Oh, also it seems like I've learned a new kind of magic ancient magic. Said Hajim as he looked away awkwardly, it didn't take a genius for Hajim to figure out the relationship between the two. Is that so? Hopefully, we can also have ancient magic as well. Said Izuku as he and Yu walked towards the magic circle. Since Hajim was on it, it won't glow for now. It's called creation magic. It lets me add energy to raw minerals to give them special qualities. Explained Hajim while Yu looked mildly surprised. You can make artifacts. Asked Yu while Hajim nodded his head as this was ancient magic, suited for a synergist like himself, so Hajim was pleased with the new power-up. Yeah, it seems like it. Said Hajim with a smile. He was already thinking of the things he can do with the new ancient magic he acquired that would help him in the journey. That's pretty cool. We've already seen artifacts in the Highlight Kingdom, and some of them are decently good, but with our knowledge of Earth, we can create something far better than those junks in the kingdom. Said Izuku while Hajim couldn't help but agree. After Yu and Izuku had both acquired the ancient magic creation and also got information on the liberators. The two of them decided to test their new ancient magic up until night. Izuku seems to be good at it, but not at the same level as Hajim, who had the convenient job of synergist, even then he can create his own artifact, given that he was far smarter than Hajim himself. Yu was the one who found it difficult because she was a magician. How's it going? Learn how yet? Asked Hajim who stood up with a yawn as he looked at the two who went off a few hours ago to test the ancient magic. It was already night at this point, and the artificial sky became dark showing also a moon. I did, but artifacts are hard. Said Yu, she had quite a lot of difficulty using it, but she was not discouraged that much, because she could already tell that she wouldn't have talent for it. It was a little easier for me than with Yu, but I don't think I will need to use it. Creation magic seems to be more compatible for you given your synergist job, so good for you. Said Izuku with a smile, not really that upset. In any case, this place is ours now, so why don't we take care of the corpse? Asked Hajim as he turned to look at the corpse of Oscar Orcus while the two others nodded. Use it to fertilize the fields. Said Yu as she too looked at the corpse, but Izuku was opposed to this. He may have changed down there, but he would not do something so low. No. Let's give him a proper burial instead, this is the least we can do for someone who granted us ancient magic, so let's not spit on the dead. Said Izuku while the two others flinched. Izuku walked over to the corpse and saw the ring which he pulled out and tossed it to Hajim who caught it. They looked at him confused, given that Izuku's earlier words contradict his action. Don't look at me like that. That ring is purposefully left on his finger for a reason. Not to mention, that ring is what's going to allow us to access the sealed rooms. Said Izuku which surprised the two and you remembered. They ah I do happen to remember one of those sealed doors having the ring symbol engraved on it. Said you while Hajim clenched his hand on the ring before pocketing it. It was the next day that they had found a very suitable and nice place to bury Oscar before giving a prayer, mostly it was Izuku's insistence to show a little bit more respect to the dead, and the other two followed behind him for their own reasons. After that, the three had decided to move towards the library, and they walked inside, where there was a white sheet of paper that was neatly placed on the table, that shows how to access the sealed rooms, and how to especially leave the labyrinth. Just like Izuku had predicted, there was a design of the same ring that Oscar had worn on his finger, before they took it for themselves, and buried Oscar's corpse outside. Looks like that magic circle is connected to the surface. Said Hajim as he observed the notes on the paper sheet, that showed the design and function of the ring. But to connect it, we need Orcus's ring. Said Yu as she looked at Hajim who had rummaged through his pocket and pulled the ring that Izuku had given him earlier. So the workshop's full of Oscar's artifacts and all his material, huh? We'd better take him with us. Said Hajim with a grin on his face, he could feel his synergist blood boiling with excitement. 
Izuku, look. Said Yu as she came back with a book, but it was not a normal one, but rather it was Oscar's diary from when he was living in the labyrinth, while well, Izuku interest got piqued as a result. Izuku took the diary as he sat on the chair in front of the desk and opened it with Yu, who had taken her lowly form, had sat on his lap with her right arm around his shoulder. Izuku's left hand wrapped around her left shoulder and pulled her closer with her head resting on his chest as they looked at the diary. Hajim grunted, but he stood up and leaned from the other side to get a good look at the content of the diary. Hmm. Um, I figured this would be the case. The other labyrinths are trials similar to this one, but that mostly depends on each liberator, and those that conquer the labyrinths are rewarded with ancient magic. Said Izuku with excitement. So if we manage to make it through the other labyrinths, we'll get our hands on ancient magic, and one of those can be. Hajim spoke and Yu decided to continue in his place. You may find a way back home. Said Yu in a low voice, but the two heard her clearly. It was possible as Izuku turned to pages and contemplated on what he learned. It's possible. According to Oscar's notes, each ancient magic governs one core aspect of existence. There are creation magic, gravity magic, spatial magic, restoration magic, spirit magic, evolution magic, metamorphosis magic. Said Izuku as he mentioned the seven ancient magic while humming thoughtfully. What do you think, Izuku? Asked you with a smile, she could tell that there was something on his mind, and Hajim also looked at Izuku, acknowledging that he was the smartest. Actually, my theory is that there could be an additional ancient magic. Said Izuku which made them raise an eyebrow in confusion since it was not really mentioned. What makes you think there is an additional ancient magic? Asked Hajim while Izuku, who had a thoughtful look, seemed to have gained a steely gaze. All ancient magic mentioned so far doesn't seem to be really related to world traveling. This leads me to believe that by combining all ancient magic, a new ancient magic is created from it. Explained Izuku his own theory while you seemed to have an idea. It's like combining two spells together to create composite magic. Said Yu who was the magic expert and as such had combined spells before in the past, which is what made her a terrifying opponent. That's precisely correct. It could be that they know or may not know, given that each of the liberators only used one ancient magic. This is just a mere speculation, but I bet this will be the case. Said Izuku with confidence that his theory is correct. As expected of you. Yosh. We'll just have to clear the other labyrinth and test that theory out unless we can gain confirmation. Said Hajim feeling a little bit of hope welling up in his chest. Chapter 12. Oscar Lair. One month had passed ever since the group of three had made the Oscar Labyrinth as their base of operation. Hajim who had managed to access the workshop, could only salivate at the blueprints of many of Oscar's projects, with the one that caught his attention the most being the golems. Izuku on the other hand didn't really particularly need to create anything with creation magic, and instead he prioritized knowledge. To Izuku, going on in the world with no knowledge is like running with your eyes blindfolded, it won't work that way. He had read Oscar's diary extensively, of course he could tell that Oscar had omitted a few things, and only ever talked about things like his relationship with the other liberators, such as Maledi, Naze and the other liberators. He had also learned about this weird hate-love relationship between him and one of the liberators named Vandrashni, due to their different opinion on art. Oscar and Vandra were basically this world version of Sasori and Dadara from Naruto Shippuden. Izuku didn't learn much, but the diary did confirm quite a few of his theory, such as the fact that Ehit had something akin to the royal guards that does his own bidding, which are the apostles of God that possess enough combat prowess to fight three liberators and almost take them down. Izuku knew he was strong to the point of being abnormal. Even Hajim, who is already a monster, was not as strong as him. Izuku had two things he excels at the most, and that would be his speed. Both skills Blink Strike and Flashing Strike combined together are enough to make him into a true menace to this world. Blink Strike enhanced his legs to move at a speed faster than light, and it also has several derivatives that are equally powerful and dangerous. Flashing Strike is a combat-oriented version of the Blink Strike, as it similarly enhances his body to the point of being able to draw his sword faster than the speed of light. Even then, speed alone isn't the only factor to win a fight. Those speed feats may sound awesome at first glance, but it requires stamina and magic. For the Apostle of Gods, Izuku had learned that they have a special mana crystal that gives them unlimited mana. Not to mention, disintegration a skill that can melt anything upon contact is extremely dangerous, especially if they can coat their respective weapons with it, which would make being touched by them dangerous. If they can manipulate disintegration to let's say coat it around their body to make it impossible to touch or mold it to shape weapons such as chains made out of disintegration, then Izuku himself isn't very confident that he can win, so he needs to be stronger. Aside from gaining knowledge on the world of Tortoise beyond what Izuku had managed to learn from the kingdom, who either hid the truth or didn't have any accurate representation of history, given the fact that Ehid had been purging a lot of people in the past. 
Izuku had also managed to learn a few magic spells from Yu herself. He had to admit that her own method of teaching is very hard to grasp, because even Hajim had given up at one point, but Izuku had managed to understand which seemed to shock Hajim and made Yu happy. In order to better understand Yu, Izuku had to first learn magic theory to understand those ratios and numbers that she kept throwing around during her explanation, but at the end, he managed to grasp everything she said to him eventually. Still, Izuku wasn't aiming to be magician since he was a swordsman, so he aimed to learn a few spells from each type of magic, and also created a few magic spells, or rather it already existed, but they were techniques he saw in his dreams. Aside from that, he had trained in his swordsmanship working on his stamina, so he can use his skills to its fullest potential, albeit Yu when learning of his stamina training had a seductive look, and it was then that Yu had suggested her own training which she calls bed training or bed spar. He couldn't resist and as such every night they had their special training, which is something the two of them enjoyed greatly, and at one point they also had one early in the morning. What is it? Hajim asked, annoyance can be clearly seen in his face and heard from his own voice. This is because Izuku had dragged him from the workshop. Izuku shook his head in displeasure. Hajim had apparently fallen in love with Oscar's workshop to the point that he and Yu had forgotten that he was there to begin with because of how absent he was from their daily life, and as such Hajim was dragged out of the workshop many times. Izuku had seen Hajim with that deranged look, and the last thing Izuku wants is for his best friend to become insane. He looked like a typical mad scientist or is it a mad synergist? I'm suggesting training exercises and if my theory is correct, you may reach a new level, and so will I. Said Izuku getting to the point while Hajim's curiosity peaked. So what is that theory of yours? Ask Hajim seriously not to be sarcastic because he knows about Izuku Hero Notebook and had seen its content which terrified him if he was being honest. Now you've been working as of lately on aerial reloading and you've actually mastered it. But the issue is that the opponents that we'll face are faster and it wouldn't be a surprise if they can just dodge the bullets. Said Izuku seriously while Hajim sighed. Then if that's the case, I will have to create a weapon that could shoot bullets faster or something like Metsule. Said Hajim bluntly. To Hajim, if something doesn't work then he will have to come with something even better. Izuku shook his head with a sigh. This type of thinking is similar to if that hit doesn't hurt him, then I will hit him even harder. It's basically something he expects All Might to do. Metsule. Well. Ignoring your naming sense. You misunderstand what I'm trying to tell you so I won't beat around the bush. Have you never thought of making living bullets? Asked Izuku while Hajim looked confused. Living bullets? Hajim quizzically asked, he was rather confused by what he meant, but he had an idea of what Izuku was trying to tell him. Bullet manipulation. You remember Whole Horse from Jojo don't you? Asked Izuku to use his ataku knowledge to communicate with another ataku, and it seemed that Hajim's face lightened up in recognition. Or better yet, we have the hero snipe. His quirk is called homing, Izuku said once more, while Hajim recognized the name of the pro hero, even if he wasn't popular. Okay, I get it. Said Hajim a grin involuntarily made its way on his face. As he thought about it, the idea was genius. He didn't know why he never thought about it. Hajim then pulled both pairs of techno-magical revolvers from the back of his pants. His left arm that was cut off at the lower floor was now replaced with a prosthetic arm that is metallic. Hajim still felt uncomfortable at the moment, but the massage that Izuku gave him regularly helped his body get used to the new foreign arm. So along the way, he had created a second revolver which he named Schlag. In order for this training to work, you'll try to shoot me, and my goal is to dodge. You've managed to evolve some of your skills during a battle crisis where you're near death or due to frustration, said Izuku as he dodged rapidly just in time. Dopen. Dopen. You're good. Said Hajim nonchalantly while pointing the muzzle of the two revolvers at Izuku who had gotten annoyed. Izuku had expected that Hajim would shoot regardless but whatever. You bastard. Said Izuku annoyed while Hajim grinned, but then Izuku expression became malicious, which sent shivers down Hajim's spine, as he knew he fucked up. If there is one thing he learned about the new Izuku is that once he holds a grudge against someone, he won't let it go and will be very petty. Izuku in an instant was onto Hajim and slapped him at the back of his head, causing his head to kiss the concrete floor. Not giving him a chance, Izuku grabbed him by his leg and hoisted him in the air, but Hajim retaliated by shooting real bullets at Izuku. Only to add salt to the wound, Izuku had catched the bullet using his teeth and started to spin Hajim in the air before letting his leg go. This caused Hajim to be sent flying in the air spinning as he let out a scream that attracted Yu's attention who watched from far away snickering a little at Hajim's expense. Hajim managed to regain his bearing as he landed on the ground on both his feet using aerodynamic to make the landing. Hajim looked with his one eye gleaming red from rage, and he started to shoot bullets at Izuku as fast as he possibly could. 
Unfortunately, those bullets were rather slow to catch someone as fast as Izuku, so all he could do was try to catch him, but Izuku wasn't making it any easier for him to catch him, as he skillfully maneuvered even when in air, and dodged the bullets. To make Hajim grow, Izuku intends to piss him off and frustrate him to force him to develop skills preferable to living bullets, Izuku had reappeared before Hajim, while letting out an intimidating yell that sent Hajim panicking, as he tripped on his back. You fucking bastard. You shouldn't be enjoying tormenting me shouted Hajim with rage as he started to put even more effort into this, not caring if he had to onlet the entire magazine of bullets on Izuku's head, knowing that the bastard will still survive. Well you're too slow to catch me, you might as well be a snail. Said Izuku mockingly as he placed one finger and did an eyelid puller can while pulling out his tongue. Are you a damn child? Shouted Hajim as he started to shoot bullets after bullets while Izuku smirked as he skillfully dodged and even started to dance, making Hajim irritation increase. You haven't seen what I can do as of yet. Said Izuku as he appeared before Hajim while sliding in between his open leg while at the same time pulling his pants down. Hi. Hajim let out a not so manly scream as he started to pull his pants up to save face. Yu, who was watching from afar, giggled at seeing Hajim being tormented, clearly enjoying this. That's such a girly scream right there, Hajim. Said Izuku leaning with his body weight as his voice was dripping with mockery and sarcasm which made Hajim even more angered. You're so dead. Shouted Hajim as he pulled flash grenades and started to throw them at Izuku who was surprised which exploded. Hajim proceeded to shoot bullets emptying the entire gun of the ammo. Wow, you really got him. Said Izuku with a fake surprise tone as his hand was draping over Hajim's shoulder, who turned to look at Izuku in surprise, while Izuku grinned maliciously at Hajim. This training had continued for another month, making it where two months had already passed for the group of three. Hajim despite his frustration had managed to achieve the goal and developed a new separate skill. The skill name is Pursuit which allows Hajim's bullet to continuously follow the target until it hits them which Hajim had to admit was very useful in the battle. During their spar, Hajim had managed on a few occasions to actually hit him, although they had quickly learned that there was a limit to Hajim's pursuit skill. Hajim had a limited bullet he could control because if he didn't have such a limit then if he used something like Metsule which he learned was a Gatling gun that Hajim had created, then Izuku would have been in serious trouble, since his body would have been riddled with bullets. Still as a result of Hajim's growth, he naturally also grew in terms of speed, so both of them had technically helped each other advance, and Hajim was quite satisfied, even though he still was extremely pissed at Izuku for the stunts that were pulled on him. Izuku currently sat in the hot bath of the Oscar lair, it was night, and the next day was going to be their last day in this place, before they have to make their way out of the labyrinth and go on their adventure journey. Splash. He could hear someone entering the water, but he knew that it was you since they had always bathed together. She looked at him with a smile as she stood naked, she was still in her little form which Izuku didn't mind. Izuku smiled and pulled her into his arms which she allowed herself as she snuggled into his arms with a comfortable sigh. On her finger was a gleaming ring because at one point, Izuku had created for her a ring and gave it to her. It was obviously made out of the glans crystal, which is very popular among the nobles as a crystal that is used on engagement rings. Yu's face that day when he got on one knee and proposed to her was priceless. That day, you never let him leave the bed, not that he wanted to leave. Hajim learned about it and gave the congratulation, but he could tell that his best friend was uncomfortable not out of jealousy, but rather because he had not really expected the relationship between him, and you would escalate to the point that he would outright ask her hand in marriage. Nonetheless, Hajim had shrugged his shoulders. He was far more focused on his goals than to pursue relationships, albeit he was more into rabbitmen, because he found their rabbit ears to be cute and even wondered what it's like to touch them. Besides, he and you were not particularly close to begin with, since he was against her being released at the start even after she was released, they didn't talk much with each other, so Hajim was not really that upset over the relationship. Tomorrow is finally it. Said Yu in a soft voice as she hugged Izuku tightly, feeling happy. Tomorrow is the day that she will leave this labyrinth after 300 years of imprisonment. Albeit, she had contemplated on more than one occasion to confine him here in the lair and let Hajim leave so he wouldn't get in the way. Then, she would spend the rest of eternity with Izuku and have his babies, something she had written extensively in her own private diary that was filled with her obsession over Izuku. Yes. Time sure does run fast when you're not actively thinking about it. Said Izuku as these two months felt like it had just gone in a blink of an eye. Once they get outside, they'll be exposed to the dangers once more. Izuku looked at Yu who was giving a loving gaze, which made him smile as he leaned his head against her with their nose touching, his hand caressed her cheek gently, before he pressed his lips against her. Yu kissed back pushing her tongue against his own as they made out in the bath. 
His hand roamed all over her petite body while she did the same as she roamed her own hand across his chest, abs and even his back as their kiss became intense. Separating from the kiss, the two gazed at each other lovingly as he stroked her face gently before burying his face in her neck, inhaling her scent, while placing a few kisses then and there all over her neck, making her release a little moan from her lips. I can't wait to introduce you to my mom and even take you on dates around my hometown, maybe even go on a honeymoon around the world just the two of us without any distraction. Said Izuku while Yu cheeks reddened from happiness. She could already imagine it. Her and Izuku are alone together with no insects daring to get in the way of their happy life. Her smile couldn't be more evident than now as it was obvious from her expression that she was daydreaming. An end. I look forward to this. Said Yu, her voice shows excitement at what she and Izuku will do together once they're out of this world and back to his world which is Earth. She doesn't really hold any particular attachment to this world since she had no one but Izuku and Hajim, but the latter is more of a friend or a brother, but either way, this world reminded her of her uncle's betrayal. Those two months were a nice way to cool down a little bit from everything that we had gone through when conquering the labyrinth. But the sooner we conquer the other labyrinths, the sooner we get to return to home together. Said Izuku firmly. And then anywhere you go is my home. Said Yu in a gentle tone, it doesn't matter where Izuku takes her, as long as it's with him, then she could care less about where they're heading. Once we head outside the Oscar labyrinth, we'll be met with very dangerous opponents like those apostles of gods that Oscar mentioned in his diary. It's best if we remain vigilant, but I'm sure we'll do just fine. Said Izuku while Yu hummed in agreement. The group of three now stood at the magic circle in the very same room where Oscar's corpse was once laid, but now was buried outside. The magic circle in the room was giving a very faint red glow, showing that they were going to be teleported outside. The Zuku adventure outfit consists of a long sleeve dark colored dress suit over a dress suit with a tie, and sports dress pants held by a belt with a star on the center. Lastly, he wears a light colored coat draped over his shoulders like a cape. Hajim's adventure outfit is similar in design to Izuku, as it consists of a black coat with crimson colored linings and trimmings, coupled with a gray blazer and a buttoned white shirt underneath it, along with a cravat terminated by a ring tied around his neck. Hajim additionally wears black pants that have gun holsters attached to them, as well as knee-length black boots. Lastly, Yu's adventure outfit consists of a frilly white dress shirt and a black miniskirt with frills. She also wears a white coat with a blue lining, as well as a short pair of boots and knee-high socks. We're fully prepared. I've learned all I can from monster meat. Said Hajim before he raised his left hand to reveal his prosthetic arm that he had been improving for the past two months. We're all geared up too. It took us a whole two months. Said Hajim as he clenched his prosthetic arm, showing that his body had already gotten used to the new arm. Prosthetic arms or limbs in general are very dangerous. Izuku knows because he spends years on the internet learning whatever he can. Most people tend to avoid buying prosthetic limbs because they're expensive, ranging from tens of thousands of yen up to 1 million yen. Not only that, prosthetic limbs have a variety of issues that most people tend to overlook, such as sanitary issues due to bacteria, so that could worsen the health of those who wear one, but he doubts that Hajim will face such issues, mainly because of the monster meat he ate. If Hajim hadn't eaten the monster meat as he did then he would have taken a long time to rehabilitate, mainly due to balance issues, skin irritation and other problems, but his new physiology as a hybrid monster had negated this little problem, so he only needed back massages regularly. It's also good for our mental health. I don't think I would have been able to just jump back to the surface two months ago without a little bit of cooldown. Izuku admitted honestly. They've spent a month or more inside the labyrinth just conquering it in order to find the exit, the ancient magic was an unexpected yet a welcome bonus, but if they were to jump back to the surface, he doesn't think he can take such mental pressure. Hajim nodded his head. He had to admit that this little cooldown had helped him focus on creating new weapons to prepare for the outside. Not only that, he was able to take his mind away from what he had experienced down there in the abyss. Not to mention, Izuku's irritating pranks with him being the target had actually helped him mentally, because it helped save his human heart with him and Izuku bantering like good old best friends. If Izuku hadn't done that, he probably would have spent an entire month in the workshop doing nothing but single-mindedly focusing on creating weapons to escape this world, so he was grateful, but he would not admit it out loud. You, my weapons and powers aren't normal up on the surface. Hajim directed his attention to the former vampire queen who looked at him a little curiously. The Holy Church and other kingdoms won't be able to keep quiet about him. We'd be fine if it were just them, but we might be targeted by godly beings such as those apostles that Izuku had learned about from Oscar's diary. Said Hajim reminding you of how dangerous his weapons were. Izuku nodded in agreement. Bringing guns and modern weapons into a world of sword and magic would change everything. 
it wouldn't be a surprise if the kingdom had called Hajim back in hopes that he would supply the army with those advanced weapons. Those people couldn't be trusted. From the very start, the kingdom had never been honest as to the reason why this human versus demon war had been going on for centuries. It was simply due to religion, the human worshipped Tehid, and the demons worshipped Alva. They practically dragged them into a petty war and even used the excuse that they were cornered by the demon race to get them to sympathize with them. If only they knew that they were being used by Ehid as entertainment, but Izuku hardly cares about them to even tell them. From what Izuku had learned up to this point. That the normal soldiers are just disposable fodders, they only know how to wield swords and wield a few basic magic. Their strength lies mostly on numbers and outnumbering the enemy. Summoned heroes like them are special because they're given a combat-type job vocation, and even those without combat-type jobs are already cheat-level characters such as Aiko-sensei, who had the job farmer that could change and revolutionize the food. If he had to use the hero ranking to rate them. Then the normal soldiers would be those nameless heroes that are above the 100th rank. Summoned heroes like them can range from top 50, which are the low tier to top 20 for those who are mid-tier, and then lastly some like Kauki can be top 10. Now those are ranking based on power alone, but since the summoned heroes need to use magic circle or chant for spell, then the pro heroes who don't really require any sort of prep would be able to outsped them and restrain them. The only difference is him, you and Hajim who can manipulate mana directly without chanting or even magic circle, which puts them at the level of top 3 pro heroes. Even then, the many hacks he, you and Hajim possess is enough to allow them to overpower them as well, but that's just speculation. The people at the top 10, more specifically top 5 pro heroes are so strong that it's hard to evaluate them, since they don't exactly need to fight, and even then most villains are third rate, so they tend to get restrained or blitzed, so Izuku couldn't exactly evaluate their limits. Lastly, there were the ancient magic users. According to the Highlight Kingdom as well as the Church, the humans are cornered by the demons for the simple reason that they can control monsters which change the tide of the wars. Control monsters. This was definitely the work of an ancient magic and if he had to guess, it was metamorphosis magic. No wonder the humans in the seer were cornered greatly. Oscar's diary was quite vague, so he couldn't exactly evaluate how strong an ancient magic user is, but from what he had managed to connect from what he had read so far, was that they should be strong enough to one-shot several All Mights with relative ease. Since each Liberator possesses one ancient magic due to them being out of his stand as such couldn't have more than one single ancient magic. He, you and Hajim who are on the path to conquer the other labyrinths around the world, should theoretically be as strong as Ehid, maybe even stronger. The reason he thinks that is because according to Oscar's note, those who had an ancient magic were said to be descendant of God and possess a fraction of his power which led him to assume that Ehit possess all ancient magic. It might just be us against the world on this journey. We may not have enough lives saved up to survive it. Said Hajim while Izuku snorted a little at that. Don't worry Hajim. We won't die that easily as long as we don't get too cocky. Said Izuku which is his honest opinion. Leaving aside his and Yu's immortality and ability to regenerate from things like decapitation, as long as they don't allow the enemy to get the best of them, then they're good. The red glow of the magic circle had increased them before, and then they disappeared from Orca's lair. That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.